say you're sorry. Welcome to the Silk and Steel Studios in Langenberg. I'm Sammy Rose. And I'm Jack Hollenberg. And we own the place. A little history behind our studio here in Langenberg. We moved from Okotoks, Alberta, I believe it was six years ago. Yep. And we had a studio there. We moved it all, kept it in boxes for quite a few years as we spent time renovating. And um, this was a guest house first because we had children that were coming. We had a tiny little house. So we said, well, let's build a bit of a guest house. And now we have a guest room in the house. And we've turned this one into a studio. About two years ago. About two years ago. Yeah. And this room back, there's a room back here now too. And we're going to take this piece of the wall out so it becomes a lot larger because we can store a lot of things there. Right now we have a lot of things around us. And when musicians come here to record and they come from out of town, we have bunk beds over in the foyer and a, an overnight bathroom. So it makes it good for guests to come in. And yes, we would like people to come and record. Right now we're recording a new album for me. I like to write and uh, my poor husband here and partner <laughs> has to get inside my head. I, as like, the, I like the poor part. <laughs> We've been doing it for 30 years and we still like each other. It's uh, a little scary. I'm going to be doing a, an album titled uh, Life's Kaleidoscope, but I've just written this one not long ago. It's called Hardworking Hands. story behind it is basically I was looking at my hands and I thought, whoa, somebody took a picture of me and, and I said, well, those hands look rough. And then I thought, you know, this is a community where the women work as hard as the men and in life period it does happen that a lot of women are working hard these days and so I said to Jack well it goes something like this and then he says he plays something and I say that's where the fun starts uh, because I got to try to figure out what she is thinking <laughs> and I say well, I didn't sing that <laughs> yes you did and then another thing happens because he's the instrumentalist and I have the the story the vocals and the melody he has to help me structure it into the right air I, I have the structure of it basically but you help arrange. develop it and arrange it. And he'll say, well, it all sort of starts sounding the same, so we have to do something about it. So it starts something like this. Now this is fairly fresh, so we'll probably be making changes and mistakes as we go, and that's okay. Okay, what key is it? It's in the G minor. Okay. She's a hard-working woman who works like men. She can clean up like a lady. Okay, to me that feels sluggish. Like, okay. I think it needs to have a little more of it. And that's how we do it. We kind of go, okay, it needs to have a little more, has to kind of be a little bit aggressive because okay. it's like that. Okay. Yeah. Now you got her. She's a hard working woman who works like a man. She can clean up like a lady, but can't hide those hard-working hands. And she's a nobody's baby. But if she's looking at you a little faster, ooh, ooh, oh, she's a hard-working lady, but she needs good loving too. Something like that. Do you feel that? Yeah. So that's what we try to do. And and when I just come in, I just come in with that and say, okay, what, what key do I sound the best in? 
And then as we go through it, then we kind of have a discussion about, okay, but I feel a bridge in there, I feel a chorus. So we get to that part where... Well, we arrange the music yeah. accordingly. Yeah. And then we get to the point where we actually lay the acoustic guitar down on a track mm -hmm. with a click track from this computer, so to get it in perfect time. Mm -hmm. So we can synchronize all the other tracks mm -hmm. with the acoustic guitar track. So I did that with this song. Yeah, we got a good s and start so on it anyway. Basically, I on, on this program I have we turn on the click track and we play. I'll move back a little bit so you can hear. Is that fast enough? Like that? Yeah. Yeah, so so once we have the first track, then it's a matter of layering. We start building the song and we have ideas as to uh, what we want for instrumentation. The thing I do quite a bit is use a double acoustic guitar track. So I have one track on one side, as you can hear. That's a lower acoustic guitar track. Then we have a second one, which is higher, with a capo one uh, guitar. Then I usually record the drum tracks. I program the drums with a drum program. And we record the bass as well. So one instrument at a time. It's called layering, like mm -hmm. we just build one instrument at the time until we get to the point where we actually do the vocals. And that's the glory of, I can go into the vocal booth and we can just do a little bit of the vocals so we you can hear We have a sound absorbing vocal booth here uh, where we, uh, we hung up a lot of curtains and sound damping material so we don't get reflections and echoes of sound and Sammy goes in there to record. You can see through the window, she can close the door, so she's isolated from the studio, and we can record her vocals. And once I record her vocals, then we start on the overdubs for electric and lead guitars and other things. Don't know the song that well. You better take your paper <laughs> with you. Usually when we do this process right here, we primarily use headphones because it's more accurate to do the recording with headphones, uh, especially when like she is in there, she couldn't hear the tracks because it would interfere with the focus. These microphones are extremely sensitive and so it has to be isolated in order to get a good focal sound. Once we record the focus, we will be recording the focus. It sounds like this. She's a hard working woman, works like a man. She can clean up like a lady, but can't hide those hard working. That's an example. That is basically the vocal recording process. Once we have that, then we start on prettying up the song with other instruments. We can do uh, piano, we can do electric guitar, we can do uh, whatever is necessary for the song. Every song has its own demands as to the kind of instrumentation that you need. 
and that is just a matter of experience to know which instrument to use because we've done the recording for so long that it comes kind of natural when you feel a song to say, well, it needs this or it needs that. Well, sometimes. Sometimes we get really crazy just because the instrument is here. Like he's got a bazooki, not a bazooka, a bazooki. And I, one day he goes... And a mandolin and a pedal steel. Oh, I think we're going to put a little bazooki on here. And I said, ah, kill that. That is terrible. <laughs> well, I just wanted to play the thing. Well, and this that's... song is a little harder, so I decided to put mm -hmm. an electric rhythm guitar on there with the acoustic guitars to give it a little more character. If you listen to the beginning of the song, you'll, I'll switch on the electric guitar track and I was you'll hear ask, the difference. Do you have a lead electric on there too? Yes, I will. Okay, well then you get an idea. Here's the electric guitar track. She's a hard working woman. See, it's got a little bit more drive. Modern country. So then we decided to put an electric guitar on there, like a lead guitar. Uh, which we'll do an intro and we'll do a lead break. So we come up with this song here like this. She's a hard working woman. Works like a man. She can clean up like a lady, but can't hide those hard working hands. She's nobody's baby. I have a mixing panel in here as well which is like a regular mixing panel yeah turn me down <laughs> and i can do the mixing inside the computer where we take all the different tracks and we can adjust them for whatever we need it's got a huge possibility you can do many 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 tracks it's the glory of a small home studio. You can do a lot in a small space as long as you have the dimming sound that you need <coughs> and, the, and the vocal booth that has to be very, very dimmed. We'll take a picture of that in there later, but it's um, got curtains so that you don't get any echoes. Some people like to record in a church because they want that natural ambience. And that's got something, but it's not the best because you can't then fix it in the mix. Here it comes flat and you have it just straight, right? Is that the right way to say it? Uh, flat response. And you don't have any echoes going on in that booth. You can add what you need. You can audience. add whatever you need in order to bring the sound out. And we've got some very good vocal mics in there. What kind have we got, Jack? We've got large diaphragm, anti-key, and, uh, and groove tube mics. Mm -hmm. We have a large selection of microphones to suit every situation that can arise. I probably have about a half a dozen different mics that we use for different instrumentations, for vocals and other things. So The I nice thing about this program is we record, for, for those of you that know about this, we record in a 32-bit digital format, which is extremely accurate format, like mm -hmm. you get a real high resolution of sound. When we do the actual mixing, we use a mixing program, which is also in here, where we bring the multi-amount of tracks down to a CD-type track, a stereo mm -hmm. track, which is a 16-bit WAV file. And once we have that, we go through a mastering process to actually get the song ready to be burned on a CD, which mm -hmm. we can all do over in the studio. We do an entire CD project with, from beginning to end, to the yes. final product. From the very beginning, which we were showing you how I write a song and I say, okay, because I do, we prefer to record only what we've written and what Jack helps me to you know, do together because i don't know it just feels good to to put out your own emotions your own feelings and do what you do we also have what we need in in all of our recording years um and our microphones to <coughs> record everybody individually and so it's fun now because we're getting to know musicians as we knew in europe 
and in Alberta, but now in Saskatchewan. We're hooking up with musicians from around here and saying, well, come on in and let's try a little bit of um, violin or fiddle on here, or hey, let's put a little bit of keyboards on this one. Give it a try. And we've got, as you will hear a little bit later in the program, um, Adam Keogh on uh, percussion. He's our He is an awesome and percussionist. Yeah. And he's just going to be playing the cajon on this one, but he also plays all kinds of other percussion. Uh, he's going to be playing some conga drums and a few tunes mm -hmm. and uh, shakers and mm -hmm. rattles and whatever percussion instruments. We use a lot of different instruments. We use shakers. Mm -hmm. We use tambourines. We use rattles, uh, cajon, uh, congas, uh, bongos. Yeah, and that's what's so great about having this soundproofed room. Because in order to record that stuff properly, it has to be in there. Same and also acoustic for acoustic guitar and, yeah. and fiddle and various acoustic instruments, they all get isolated in the sound booth. Uh, this way we can make a complete accurate uh, recording mm -hmm. of the sound and hear exactly what the instrument sounds like. And then in the mix, we mix the sound and we can enhance it in any way it needs to be enhanced. Mm -hmm. On this album, we're doing, a, you've programmed in the drums. Yes. Um, but, and we've done that with a few others, but we have a very good friend in Holland who is at this moment working on live drum tracks. He's been our producer, friend, and drummer on two of our other albums already. Probably uh, one of the top in, drummers in Europe. Yeah, he's sponsored he by... Is, uh, he's got exactly the same programs we have. So the mm -hmm. interesting thing is we just fire off files to him on email and he records his drum tracks and whatever he needs and sends them back to us. Yeah, in a small drum studio and it's awesome. So it's fantastic to be able to record like that. It's exciting to get back at it and continually do this and with, I guess, technology the way it is, although it torments us being the zoom and boomer age, you know, <laughs> because you have to learn so much. If we use it to our advantage like that, uh, Hans Molinar is our friend, by the way, and he's just like a fantastic drummer. He's not just a good drummer, he's very good. And he said, one step further, if you need your harmonica, um, we can send it off to Werner, Werner in Norway. Laz, and, and he's in Norway now. And he played also on our Rose album. So we have friends all over the yeah. world, actually, that, that play, play uh, on our music. Uh, we, can, we can incorporate all kinds of musicians from Europe, from America, and from Canada. And that comes from years of being in the music business. We've, yeah. been, we've, been ha we've had the good fortune to record seven albums, I guess, and we've played down in South America, we've been in Chile, and in South, uh, uh, Columbia. So if anybody yeah. is interested in uh, contacting us, uh, yeah, we can definitely make sure they have our contact numbers. Yeah. And that's Jack at 306-743-8808. And, and Sammy at 306-743-7514. Yeah, what's, my number? For a second. what's my number? Yeah, that, what's, your number? Um, what's my name? What I'm getting at is that it's been really wonderful to be able to be around so much already in our musical careers that we want to be able to record now for other people besides ourselves. We're using ourselves for an example because, well, I'm a good guinea pig. What can I say? <laughs> and so we'd like other people to be able to come and Record with us here. Spend time Silk with us at Silk and Steel Music Studios. Yes. We have, we call it the Silk and Steel Garden Studio. We have wonderful creative spaces. We've got a deck out in the back, a deck out in the front, and I grow a beautiful garden over the summer. A lot of songs come out of that garden, I think. <laughs> and um, I have a pendulum swing over in the other yard, too, that my wonderful daughter in law, Katie, and Jack created for me after we had to take the trees down. Yeah. And that's just, it's a very, very relaxing. So when people would come here and they say, well, I want to work on an album or I want to do things, you know, they can actually do that. Now we're going to move on to the next segment of the show. We've asked um, Adam and Charlotte to come and play some music with us because we'd like to give everybody a sneak peek 
into some of the things that we are recording now on our new album. And uh, it is the album called Life's Kaleidoscope. Some people, they retire and they hit the rocking chair. Me, I just want to start rocking. <laughs> there you go. So I'm calling myself a, I am calling myself a Zoom and Boomer. You don't fit. You fit. You're Wait, almost there. I'm there. I, I... <laughs> well, some people are gearing down. I like to gear up. We took a bit of a sabbatical for about five years, almost, after playing music together for 30 years. And we just came here from Alberta and had to do all the rebuilding. We still like each other after three renovations. And, uh, At least so it appears. <laughs> <laughs> but so we've decided now it's time to get back to our music and that you want to be on board. Great. Let me introduce to our listeners right now the people that are on board with me. I'm Sammy Rose, first of all. Most people know that now. The singer-songwriter. My sidekick and my partner in life is Jack Hollenberg, instrumentalist. Neighbor, friend, and a great percussionist over here, Adam Keogh. And last but not least, Charlotte Medley on bass and harmony vocals. So we're a local Yoko's, I guess, huh? but we're having a great time. <laughs> So this is what happens after we write the songs and get working on the things in the studio, as we've shown a bit earlier. And uh, these are the songs for the new album. The new album is called Life's Kaleidoscope. And it all started with this song. About three years ago, I said, Jack, I'm not going to wait till we're done building things. Let's go to the lake and take a break. And we wrote at my sister's lake, a beautiful place of serenity. And we wrote this song. And it was from a movie I had seen. Songs come from all different directions. And this one is called That Kind of Leaving. Wrong. 
will be the one of the first songs on the album. Now, we do write some songs about us. That does happen. Uh, people ask where the songs come from. I was in a relationship, wasn't so good, had to get out. Jack was in a relationship, wasn't so good, had to get out. But <laughs> we found each other. <laughs> it happens. And I was pretty scared. I was kind of like really scared. And he had the patience to hang in there for me. So this song is basically for us, Jack, and it's called Us. It's called Us. A fun song. Were you all smiling? Because we are having fun, right? Okay, all right. Fun. Well, I write all kinds of songs. People want to know where they come from. This is a song. The next one is called uh, It Ain't Right. And it pertains mostly to the people between the 30, 40 years old who are trying to have a career, trying to have a job, trying to have a family, trying to run a household. Uh, Something like you, Adam. Mm -hmm. Young. And so every once in a while, yeah, you gotta put a little romance in there for, the, for each other. And that gets forgotten sometimes. And I have children of that age too, and I'm, I'm seeing it. We've been there and done that. So this is a, my little message song.
message song. Do you think it'll hit home? <laughs> you remembered, right? You lit the candles and poured that wine. Or did you forget the candles and just pour the wine? <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to you. Know, you just drank your wine and then I'm wine. pouring it. <laughs> so pour it. Drink it out of the bottle. <laughs> The next song I wrote is a, well, you know, you got to have a hurting song or a heartbreak song or something, because I am considered country blues. I have no idea what I am. It's what comes out of me. It's what I write. And uh, this one's called What It's Like to Get the Blues. And if you don't listen to my advice from the last song, well, you don't want to get the blues like this. <coughs> All right. you think I couldn't uh, handle the truth? What made you lose faith in me and you? What could have been so bad to make you leave like that? To crying on your side of bed. Said you had never leave, did you forget? What part of I love you did you not get? All I can do is cry. Our love is just a lie. Now I'm a lion like a lid on your side of the bed. Like some old book you read Left to wondering what I should or should not have said Never knew what it was to lose Never knew the blues till you are alive Crying on your side of the That's why people don't listen to the advice, right? <laughs> That's too sad. Well, you know, you, everyone, you know, music brings out, when you write, it comes from every direction. Maybe I've been there. I was playing with a, a big Texas blues band in Calgary one time, and uh, I was singing a really bluesy song, because I mean, that's what they were doing. And this guy was big. He was big. He was like six foot seven. He looks down on me and he says, How's a little gal from Canada sing the blues like that? And I said, I guess I have. <laughs> Experiences of road. Should we do something happy? Sure. Like, whatever. 
Well, my sisters and I went to New York. This is a fun song. And this is a true experience of what happened when we went to New York. It was the middle of summer, never been to New York. Went to go see our, sis our other sister who had moved there. And I uh, came home and just before the art retreat, wrote the song. And it's just true. So let's do it. Call the Big Apple. Singing a bluesy song, you're gonna do that, that's for sure. We actually we have another one that's called um, Changing Shoes. That's gonna be on there. This one, we're not, uh, when we got the production finished, of course, there'll be, you know, some uh, violin in there and some different instrumentation. But right now, this is what you're hearing of the songs. And when we write the songs, of course, it's just an acoustic guitar at first. Some people write with piano, but we're, we're the guitar people because Jack's a guitar guy, right? This one's called changing. Not a piano guy. This one's <laughs> called changing shoes, and it's a little bit of a satirical song, a little bit of a spoofy thing, because we've been doing music for quite some time already, and uh, I, I guess I said that earlier, so I don't feel ashamed to say it. Thirty years, I swear. Oh my gosh. A little more, maybe. Oh, that was yesterday. And we've seen yeah. we've seen a few things. We can't tell all the road stories, but we've seen and uh, done, and we see people changing partners a lot. And, and we were wondering about that. And so, so happens we, a so, lot these days. So we just call it changing shoes. Instead of changing parts. Yeah. There you go. So you all know what I'm talking about. What's wrong with that girl? She's got a shoe fetish. <laughs> Change and shoot. 
uh, every once in a while we have these experiences and we, uh, you know, put some humor in it, right? Okay, this ain't a cheating song, it ain't a hurting song. It's actually a fun song about, you know, like couples that have been together for quite a while and they take, it, take each other for granted. You're scowling like, what song is this? <laughs> yeah. Did we practice this? Yet, right. Did we this learn is, this song? Does it bring memories to Charlotte? Oh, God. <laughs> but that's okay. the point I'll of that. Let's talk to about that. So what is the name of this song? I'm sure. It's written on the floor by you. By you. By you. <laughs> oh, you put it down here. Yeah. I know. Our minds are going. It's called something on oh, your mind. that's what it is. That's why. We're good, hmm? So that's what we're going to do for you right now. Fiddle, steel, all kinds of things. Uh, yeah, we need uh, harmonica. What do you call it? A bass player. A full piano. A bass player. We have a bass player. <laughs> oh, you mean a real I bass player? Yeah, a real one. That's a real, real bass player. Right? <laughs> we, um, I think we're going to wrap it up with this song. We're going to attempt the title cut of the song. It's, uh, well, we just threw Adam into it because he's been off vacationing. And uh, we're just going to 
see if we can remember what we're doing with it. It's a fairly intense song, you know, we've all been around for a while and, you know, sometimes life just stinks, stuff happens, but you gotta get up, dust it off and move on. And being this is my, I think, is it my seventh album? I think it's my yes. seventh. Um, I just, see them all over here, yeah. Folks. Yeah, I, got, I have been, you know, doing other jobs to make money so that I could play music. You know, that's beside We me. all do. And then Can't so make money with yeah. music. <laughs> You either gotta make money or make music. No, that's not entirely true. You can make a little money with music, but you better support yourself a tad. So we just thought, well, okay, now let's do this song uh, because stuff has happened to all of us in, in our lives. But we're all here to tell the story and to get up and get on with it. Thanks for listening. That's a sneak peek at our brand new album called Life's Kaleidoscope. If you're at all interested in contacting us for recording purposes or for hiring us to come out and do things, I'm Sammy Rose. My phone number is area code 306-743-7514 in Lanchenburg. And my website is sammyrosehollenberg.com. Of course, with the www's. So please feel free to hook up on there because you can hook up also on Facebook. That's all connected. And uh, all of the songs will be available on iTunes plus some of our other albums. We'd like to leave you now with our title cut called Life's Kaleidoscope. <laughs> Never fall the same way.